In this video, we demonstrate sealing remains in a Biosafety Level 4 containment body bag using a Bioseal System 5 portable system. The advantage of the portable system is that in addition to functioning via a standard AC outlet, it has its own power supply which allows for use in locations where access to a standard AC outlet is not available. It is appropriate for use in clinical and non-clinical locations, by healthcare professionals, law enforcement, coroners, and by disaster response teams after a mass casualty or pandemic event. The portable Bioseal system is described by the manufacturer as a fully hermetic Biosafety Level 4 body containment system able to safely contain infected remains and associated body fluids for subsequent transport. In this video, we'll discuss the use of this system in the context of processing the remains of individuals suspected or known to be infected with pathogens of concern, including viral hemorrhagic fevers, novel influenza, and coronaviruses. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention provides guidance for healthcare and mortuary workers who may handle infectious remains. It is recommended that everyone who may participate in the handling of human remains, possibly infected with a pathogen of concern, familiarize themselves with the disease-specific guideline prior to entering the processing location. Preparedness dictates that organizations using the Bioseal system should develop policies and protocols to inform safe handling, tracking, and transportation of infected human remains. Tracking or chain of custody documents should be developed within the guidance from the CDC as well as state and local requirements. Individuals handling remains of such patients should be specifically trained in appropriate processes for a given pathogen of concern. It is important to note that some pathogens may not require the same level of caution or care. For instance, managing remains of patients with a confirmed viral hemorrhagic fever, such as Ebola or Lassa virus, is very different than managing remains of those infected with SARS-CoV, MERS-CoV, or a novel influenza virus. Similarly, individuals handling remains of patients with a known or suspected infection caused by a pathogen of concern should be donned in the appropriate personal protective equipment, or PPE, as recommended by CDC, to mitigate the risk for exposure, regardless of the setting. Appropriate PPE may range from a full biological suit with a powered air purifying respirator, or PAPA, to a disposable isolation gown with an N95 respirator, face shield, and gloves, depending on the identified routes of transmission specific to the pathogen. Be mindful that remains are located within the hot zone, meaning the area is considered dangerous and contaminated with the pathogen of concern. Before entering the hot zone, you should ensure you have the following equipment on hand for processing remains. An equipment checklist is recommended to ensure success. Bioseal System 5 Portable System Bioseal Material Litter, gurney or cart Drapes or sheets 6mm body bags with welded seams 18mm body bags with welded seams a step-by-step -step protocol. Alcohol gel for hand and glove hygiene. Disinfecting wipes. Gloves with extended cuffs. Zip ties. Biohazard pouch. Camera. Retaining clip. It is helpful to pre-cut the bioseal material before entering the hot zone. Estimate the height and girth of the remains to determine the length of material to be cut from the roll. Be sure to allow enough material to seal around the remains and the body bag. Approximately 12 inches extra at each end is usually sufficient. Bioseal material is marked at 12 inch increments along the length of the roll to facilitate easy measurement. Three to four staff are recommended to safely complete the sealing process for an average adult body. The actual number of staff required is dependent on the size, weight, and condition of the remains. Bariatric remains may require additional material to manage properly. Two lengths of bioseal material may have to be cut 
and joined together in order to accommodate larger remains. When you have all of the equipment you will need, you can proceed to the hot zone. Prior to beginning the sealing process, the thermosealer should be plugged in and switched to its highest setting, level 8, and placed in the stand so it will be at operating temperature when it is needed. Heating time is approximately 10 minutes. Processing of remains should be performed in a slow and deliberate manner with the strictest attention to detail. The CDC's Ebola protocol states photographs should be taken of the deceased prior to processing for purposes of identification. Follow your organization's protocols for how to safely accomplish this in a hot zone. To mitigate risk of exposure, remains are processed as is. Washing of remains or removal of tubes and devices should be avoided. If possible, remains should be wrapped in a sheet, mortuary shroud, or drape. Prior to placement in the bioseal material, the remains should be placed in a 6 mil body bag. There may be situations where body bags are in short supply, and remains may be sealed directly into the bioseal material with only a sheet, mortuary shroud, or drape. Gently roll the wrapped remains, placing the 6 mil body bag under the remains. Roll the remains back onto the body bag and pull the leading edge of the body bag from under the remains so the remains are lying flat and are centered in the body bag. Cover the remains completely with the zippered top of the body bag. Carefully zip the body bag closed. Once closed, all surfaces of the body bag, top, bottom and edges, should be wiped with an EPA approved disinfectant specific to the pathogen of concern and allowed to air dry. The excess areas of the body bag should be wrapped around the remains and taped in place. This will prevent them from being sandwiched between the bioseal material when the thermosealer is used, potentially compromising the seal. To place the body bag on the bioseal material, roll the body bag to one side and place the open edge of the material as far under the body bag as possible. Fold the top layer of the bioseal material toward the sealed edge so the body bag is resting on the interior surface of the lower layer. Roll the body bag toward the sealed edge of the material and pull the lower layer of material so it extends beyond the body bag. Position the body bag so that it is lying centered between the sealed and open edges of the material. Then maneuver the body bag so that it is centered between the top end and bottom end of the bioseal material. Cover the body bag with the top layer of the material. Bioseal's manufacturer list two methods for sealing the material. The first is a slow continuous sliding motion. The second method involves leaving the thermosealer in the same location for three seconds 
and overlapping the seal each time the thermosealer is moved. For viral hemorrhagic fevers and other select pathogens of concern, the overlapping method is preferred. The perimeter of the material, including the factory sealed edge, needs to be sealed twice, creating an envelope around the remains. Sealing the material twice creates a redundant seal preventing potential leakage of bodily fluids. The manufacturer suggests starting the sealing process with the outermost guideline marked for use with the thermosealer. The second seal should be made along the second innermost guideline. A proper seal will have a ridged appearance along the printed lines. Start the sealing process along one of the shorter edges. Before beginning to heat seal the material, position a retaining clip along the material's edge to facilitate creating straight seams without creases during the sealing process. Due to the design of the thermosealer, you may need to trim excess material from below the first seal in order for the thermosealer to reach the second line. Trimming is recommended rather than folding the material, as folding may lead to inadvertently sealing the folded material to the area already sealed. Do not trim too close to the lower edge of the seal. This area will have a final trimming once sealing has been completed prior to being disinfected. When the thermosealer can reach the second guideline, begin the second perimeter seal. Once the perimeter has been sealed twice, each corner must be sealed diagonally from side to side. This diagonal seal should cross the two perimeter seals. This will ensure leaking will not occur at corner seams. After the perimeter and corners are sealed completely, the excess material should be trimmed from the sealed edges. When complete, there should be no superfluous material extending from the sealed edges. This will facilitate effective surface cleaning and disinfection to leave the sealed edge free of contamination. All surfaces of the bioseal material, top, edges and bottom, should be wiped with an EPA-approved disinfectant specific to the pathogen of concern and allowed to air dry. Peel the backing from a biohazard pouch and attach the pouch to the bioseal material. The remains should be labelled on the provided tag according to your organization's protocol. At minimum include the patient's name, their date of birth, the date, time and location of death, medical record number or other unique identifying number. Place the tag in the self-adhesive biohazard pouch. Alternatively, write on the bioseal material after disinfection. How the remains are further managed before final transport depends on the pathogen of concern and the setting. The location will affect how movement from the hot zone to the warm and cold zones is accomplished. Key points to remember as human remains are processed. A slow and deliberate approach will keep everyone safe. Change gloves, performed hand hygiene or glove hygiene routinely during the process as required. Use disinfectants according to the manufacturer's instructions for use. Maintain separation between zones. Keep contaminated equipment contained within the hot zone. When in doubt, stop 
and disinfect. Always follow your organization's protocols.